All right, welcome back to the Slasher and Sean show. You get the first name again, Rod, because honestly, you have cooked up the topics today, and I think you- no, 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 Sean. This is the Sean and Slasher show. Sean, you were on the broadcast desk this week, and mm-hmm. God, you were so good to look at. Thank you so much. What about my voice? I had a a face for radio because I was casting. You know, <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> You've done a great job up there. It's so good to have you back. How how was it? You were you not you weren't expecting that, right? No, yeah, yeah. It was actually like the night before. I was eating ramen. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have ramen. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but we were all eating ramen. It was like me, Achilles, Doug, Mimi, and Achilles' friend. And Doug was like, "Oh yeah, I think Paul is sick. Would you be down to cast?" And I was like, "Are you being serious?" And yes, uh, I just said yeah, and. Thank goodness, uh, I don't think it'll be happening again because that was, I was full. I was very nervous, Rod. I'm not gonna lie, I was super nervous going to that cast, but I think it all worked out. Look, you brought the hype, all right? No one can say that you did not bring the excitement. (laughs) Shut up. Because I I felt that. I mean, we got got a banger of a series, and I don't see Riot should be thanking everyone. They've been getting a banger of a tournament so far because that EDG Loud game delivered, but you definitely did a great job. Thank you. Man. Showing the emotion, bringing us to viewers at home, the experience, everything that you're feeling out there. I'm not going to lie on Bind when Kalanzin had those two like insane rounds. You know what I'm talking about? On Bind when Kalanzin had like two clutches. There was one where Chi Chi was flanking short A and Kalanzin. I was basically like, oh, Kalanzin's so dead. He's dead. And Kalanzin missed his flash and Chi Chi missed. And then Kalanzin like whipped around and won. I was just thinking like, bro, EDG need to win this game. EDG need to win this game because all of China will literally murder me for jinxing EDG this hard. Thank God they pulled through on Bind. I felt like the biggest jinx at that moment. But yeah, they looked insane on Bind. Ascent, they definitely weren't prepared for. And Haven, I can I don't know. I feel like that that's going to hurt that they lost that Haven game. That is going to hurt. I mean, we were texting each other before uh, the, the match came. We pretty much exactly predicted what the, the map draft was going to come down to. You know, ban out of Fracture was always going to come. A ban out of um, we was Lotus was always going to come from uh, EDG's end. So you were going to have EDG most likely picking Binder Split and then Loud having a favorable matchup where they get to pick Ascent, which they've been dominating on. And EDG had not played that much recently although ironically they had played it a couple times here at champions one getting blown out by eg and then the other time beating giants um and then going to haven which is definitely favored to loud you were telling me you thought they actually had to win you thought they had to win on the ascent to close the series but it ended up being that haven was the one that came down you know to the very end yeah i was kind of surprised at how blown out they got on haven like honestly that game was never close it was kind of a snooze to cast that game. I think I'm looking at it right now. They only had two first bloods that entire map. I mean, like, it never felt like they were going to beat loud on that game. Like, two and 16 on first bloods. That's so rough. Uh, yeah. I was completely wrong about that. On Haven, I do think they could have won that game. I do think they could have. I think there's a couple missed shots, or not even missed shots, just. Man, Sadak just put Kong Kong down in like the late portion of that game. But looking at it, I mean, it didn't matter too much up until the last round. And then also that B round where he just got timed so hard yeah. on the on guarding the diffuser. That was pain. That was pure pain. I talked to him afterwards and he was just like devastated about that. But um because you can't say yeah. that EDG didn't have multiple opportunities in that Haven map to put Loud away. Yeah. They were right at the doorstop. And as you just mentioned, and we spoke a little bit before we started recording, you know, Kang Kang and the ver- and those very clutch situations went 0 in 3 in first interactions and first engagements. Um, you mentioned that Sadhak killed him twice at the end of that map. And also Kawazin, you know, caught him off on B site. If he wins even one of those first three opening duels, maybe they get into overtime. Maybe they even win the map outright. So definitely EDG came 
about as close as you could to, to make it in the top four. They really did. Have, they had a great tournament. They did. Honestly, like I thought that they were poised to actually beat loud in that best of three. I thought they were super close and they just fell short right at the finish line. And I think if it was like the previous versions of loud that we had talked about earlier, right? I would say, oh man, like this is kind of disappointing for EDG. But this version of loud that we've seen throughout this tournament is they are so back, dude. Like they are so back they right are now. Are back. They are so back. I mean, like, look at the teams they've played. They played DRX, Liquid, Navi, Fnatic, Paper X, EDG. That is insane, dude. Like their run to even still be in this tournament, and they're about to play Fnatic again. Holy shit! If this team beats Fnatic again, the confidence they will have going into the lower finals. Do you think they run it? Do you think they run it at that point? Loud has had by far the hardest schedule of any team in this tournament. If they go on to win this, I mean, Fnatic had pretty much an insane bracket to win lock-in. But considering this is a championship event and they've had more teams to run through, this would be the... And considering all of the outside context, you know, involved with Aspas and the team and Fraud hating me <laughs> right now, you know, and everything that's happening, this would definitely be the most impressive run in the short bower and tournament history that we've had the past couple years. It would be incredibly impressive. It's already impressive enough before um, the break, you know, last week when we were recording, I and we were both saying the last team that Fnatic wanted to see in the quarterfinals was loud. They would have rather literally any other <laughs> matchup except the one that they got. And we saw what happened. Loud gave them the business. And they took PRX to the limit as yeah. well. So Loud really deserves so much credit. Les is on fire. Aspis is playing really well. They look like that championship level team. They really do. I dude, that Paper X series, they could have won that. I feel like they they they, they really should have closed out that Lotus game. Like that Lotus yeah. game. The opening map. They should have two owed Paper X in that series, if I'm being honest. But Paper Rex. Something is just, he's like, oh, he is unlike any other player I think I've ever seen. This guy is incredible to watch. He's just a highlight reel walking around in the server. Everything he does is insanely flashy. I think the loud players in an interview couldn't even believe that he took that op shot on long and he picked up a judge in the site like they never ever expected that shit ever like that's the kind of play that he makes that probably no one else makes in, in his shoes in that scenario and he just destroyed them on that round i think that was the last round of regulation right yeah it's wild it's actually so wild you know when i asked you a couple weeks ago who had to perform the best for their Team to win, Demon One, Kang Kang, and something. I gotta say, all three players have delivered in making that statement true. Like a couple weeks ago, we said these guys had to perform, and they really have. Something was a little bit slow, I think, to start off champions, but as soon as he's gotten his feet under him, he will be the reason that PRX probably has the best chance of winning the championship right now. I mean, EG looks incredible and fantastic they've definitely had a weaker road to get here but they dominated drx um in that semi-final in the winter semi uh, semi-final match you know ethan and and demon one are both playing great but you've got to probably give a slight edge to prx based on the way they're performing you know defy is playing great forsaken is playing great that entire team is clicking and then you have something here now to bring that all-star level duelist opping insanity crazy carry potential <laughs> and he is coming through they absolutely they are in the driving seat to win the championship right now i dude i agree i i agree i this is a hard game to predict this eg versus paper x game because potter has a few days to cook and when potter has time to cook I swear every time in these scenarios, EG comes out looking so, so fresh. Like they have so many new ideas. 
just like that Yoru comp on Pearl. That totally blindsided EDG in that game. Did you see that third map? Like, going into that third map, I was like, ooh, I think I low-key favor EDG here. Like, Pearl, Kong Kong is going to have this off. It's open season for him. Like, this is going to be insane. But the Yor comp, and even more so, Demon 1, actually, in that game. Demon 1, holy, f like, rod. Sean. He doesn't like the op, okay? He doesn't want it. Dude. It's all good. He played a full series against fucking was it a full series against the RX? Where he played controller, Rod. He was brimstone and astra throughout and that. Yes. And shit on them. He was plus 27 on Brim and Astra against the RX. Six and one in first blood. It's like this guy is the real fucking deal. And this is what I told people in Tokyo. Like, that was so unfair how people were ju judging his performance. Because if you remember, he had passport pro or I'm sorry, visa issues going into Tokyo. And yep. like, he people were super afraid he was going to miss that event. And it wasn't until literally like two days before that he got there. And so he was probably like pretty jet lagged, if I had to guess, making that you know, trip across the ocean. I think they had like one to two days of prac is what he said. Because in addition to obviously not being there, he can't even practice with the team because he's in the States. They're over there early doing content days and stuff like that. So he, they're preparing to actually play Master Tokyo with, who was it at the time? Apoth or someone? I don't remember actually who EG was planning on using in place of him. They had their plans for someone to like sub in for him. It might have been reformed. I think it might have been reformed. It could have been Apoth though. People were really critical of him. This is what we saw in VCD Americas. Like this is what I remember. I didn't remember seeing all the controller and shit that I'm seeing now, like with the Astra busting out. Like, but that just makes him even better in my eyes. <laughs> what do you think about this? I think that EG has the best possible matchup to take down PRX of anybody in this tournament. You've got to give Potter so much credit for the work that she has done over the second half of this year to turn that team around along with Demon 1 coming in to the championship level that we've seen um, throughout Tokyo to put away any allegations of it being a fluke this event clearly being the best North America team between them and NRG. And if there was anyone that would be able to stop PRX's insanely offensive, a whole W, but at the same time, very strategic way of playing, it would be Potter in terms of anti stratting And we cannot overstate that Ethan is a top five player in the world right now. Very likely he is the best player in North America. And then with the level that Demon One is playing, especially here at Champions at this event, and he's able to flex onto the controller, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> while, while if if um, if Bustio wants to play Chamber and wants to op or do whatever, and it seems to be totally fine, then I definitely think EG would be the team to stop PRX. So it is going to be... It's a really fucking huge matchup. I I, it, yeah. it, I feel like PRX has a slight, a slight edge, but EG definitely has all the tools to make it that they're going to be in the grand final. Yeah, I, I mean, I do feel like PRX is slightly more battle tested, I guess, right? Like, sure. Yeah. Slightly more, like not even, it's not even like significant though, right? Because PRX 2 would EDG, no. EG did play edg i guess they played loud but then eg played drx you know like they both played foot i mean maybe they, honestly they're about the same fpx but crew i think is slightly better than fpx it's not like that significant though you know what i'm saying i don't know and no it's a really close matchup both, both matchups are really really tight and does really close to call. Paper Rex actually give EDG, or I'm sorry, does Paper Rex give EG Fracture? I think they do. 
they're gonna have to do a lot of prep if they're gonna play fracture and even then like is it good is it still gonna work i i don't know like i've yet to see a team really stick it to eg on fracture for a long time I think and, it, and it's backfired for everyone that that tried to right wasn't it at um DRX tried that shit it just... wasn't DRX that tried that and that it did not no. I mean it was it wasn't a blowout or anything but um EG definitely felt like they were the better team yeah I mean it, it really wasn't a blowout but it was also like it never felt like DRX was gonna win that game you know no it didn't it, it, like the final score is 13 9 but i don't even feel like that's indicative of like what i saw like i feel like it it felt like a 13 6 you know it, it, yes like derek's was clawing back to get that 13 9 and then they were just put down i mean just considering that haven is pretty much prx's permaban then yeah. Un unless PRX changes their entire way they've been doing the map draft, then you feel like Fracture is going to get through no matter what. And then EG will have a slight upper hand in the draft just because of that. They could do that. I mean, they could really focus on Haven. If I'm Paper X, I feel like I heavy focus Haven in these couple days. Because I don't. And, and, and get rid of Fracture. Yeah, just because, like, I've never seen eg feel super comfy on haven themselves like i think uh it's one of those maps where eg has always looked kind of questionable on in the past it's not saying they're like terrible it's just never been towards the top of their map pool so i think that would be a play for paper x if they wanted to i mean they won on split and lotus the last time they met um I wonder if we will see almost an identical draft that we saw in the lower final of Tokyo. I don't know. I don't see it going that way. Paper Rex has been really liking Pearl. Like they're they per have. It seems like a solid pick. I mean, they ended up picking Pearl for their second pick in the. Yeah, Tokyo. they left it as like third map. What Loud did to them on Split was kind of crazy. That was that was crazy to watch. Less literally speaking, just had... speaking of okay, so we've we've gone over the, the PRX EG matchup a bit. The rematch in the lower final, last year's grand final championship between Loud and Fnatic. I mean, this is going to be a banger again. Do, are you thinking Mini comes back with some new plans? Are you favoring Fnatic in a rematch here or? Are you thinking Loud is still going to come out with, you know, the same type of mentality that they had in the first series, which is no mm -hmm. pressure, no pressure. They're not the, you know, they don't have an insane Brazilian crowd uh, behind them. Um, Wes might is still playing on an incredible level. Aspis is right there. They definitely can make this happen. Yeah, this is, this, this is interesting. So, I, I'm i going to go through the veto, actually. I think the bans remain the same. I think, like, Loud still bans Fracture. I think Fnatic still bans Pearl. I think Loud could very well pick Ascent again. I think even though Fnatic has shown that they're shaky on Haven, they can still close out these Haven games. You know, like, they still close them out. They still get the dub on Haven. So it would be risky as fuck for Loud to pick Haven. I think Loud could just pick Ascent again and just go like, fuck it, it's just Ascent. Like, basic comp versus basic comp. We will outshoot you here. We will outplay you here. You can't do anything too crazy. I think they might just pick it again. And then Fnatic, they could pick Lotus again. That did not go well at all. It didn't, but it felt very, like, anti strati when I watched it the first time. Like, Loud won both pistols, if I remember correctly. Let me see here. No. No, they actually only won one, one pistol, but they won the bonus. But how they fucking put them down in that second half, actually. Hmm. Ascent, they won both pistols. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think... I think the way Allowed approached that like A site in the early rounds was weird. Like I think they were like scrimming and like being really scrappy by the A site on Lotus. 
And I don't think they would do that again. Like, I, I think that was like almost like a blind shot. Like, I'm, I'm going through this round right now. I want to say they just walk up. Oh, on the, on the fucking bonus, dude, they just get two kills in the field. And then they just run up it. Like, they just sprint up. I don't think that would happen again. Fourth round is like scrappy towards C. And I think fifth round is the round they probably just walk in the side. Yeah, they're just like walking around over here by the field and they're just getting so many kills. There's no way Fanatical lets this happen again. I swear. I think there's a chance Loud wins the game, but it would be in a very different way. And I think Fnatic would be down to try again. With that said, I think Loud has looked shaky on bind. I think Fnatic could pick bind, but they probably won't based on what happened against the RX. <laughs> that, yeah, I don't <laughs> think we are going to be seeing bind. I think they could. Again, after that. I think they could pick split. What happened there, by the way? Like, how? I mean. That was crazy. Uh, what? That was crazy <laughs> to see, bro. Like, I'm not going to lie. So many great set plays on defense, being aggro, being aggressive, taking the fight to Fnatic that entire second half. They look like PRX. Um, That's crazy the to watch. Playing. Honestly, fucking crazy to watch. Like, actually ridiculous. Boaster went 0-10 on the attack half. Like, people were going crazy on the forums obviously at that moment i just think like it's it can be hard to make that comp work i was surprised to see them run the chamber raise comp just because fanatic is the type of team that is so util based i even though alfio is an insane player i thought it was interesting that they went into that route uh it didn't seem very fanatic esque i guess even though it is a comp i like I just didn't think they would be the team to do it. They were always running the cipher and shit before. I bet they would go back to it, actually. I don't know how you're going to go. I am taking Fnatic in the rematch. I think so, too. I think I'm taking Fnatic, too. I don't. I think it will go three maps. But I think they're the type of team that if they lose, they're going to study really hard. Now, all of that said, I do think Cloud's the type of team to beat them. Like, I don't think this is an easy game for Fnatic. And I definitely don't trust them right now. My head tells me we are getting a PRX Fnatic Grand Final. My heart tells me that EG is winning the World Championship. <laughs> uh, dude, I don't know. I don't think I don't know if Fnatic can make it. It's hard to say that Fnatic can make it to the finals through through EG through Loud and EG PRX loser. I think that EG is going to have the biggest mental hurdle if they lose to PRX and they have to play Fnatic in the, the lower final to get to the grand final. I do think that Fnatic presents as big or more of a challenge than even PRX in certain ways to EG. Yeah. That they're, that they're, I really would love I think they, they need to be PRX to get to the grand final they and they don't want to see Fnatic and, and losers. Hmm. They definitely wouldn't want to for sure. It's just dude, like I don't think Fnatic could beat them on Fracture. They have to ban Pearl. I don't think Fnatic can beat EG on Ascent. Fnatic could probably beat them on Haven. Bind would be pretty interesting. I, don't, I think Fnatic should be able to... This new Fnatic Bind isn't as good as the old one. Split. I think I think Fnatic is really fucking good on Split. Like, really good. Like, sneaky good. Like, people are... How many, how many straight have they won on this map? It's just that Fnatic's weaknesses have come through this event. They are shaky in a couple maps. They've been exposed in a couple places. Um... Boaster has had some inconsistent performances like himself. And I think that, you know, as much as teammates have done well, you know, there are there are some opportunities there. So they're definitely beatable, obviously. Bro, they've won eight straight on split. I just checked. Eight straight. They're not fucking around on that map. People are sleeping on Fnatic split. 
That shit might be the best in the world right now. Okay, well, you, you make some picks. I think Pick here, uh, Jean Garris, Jean Garris, brother of Sean. <laughs> I think, I do think Fnatic beats allowed. I think that split pick is key. I think if they get Lotus in the pool with split, it's going to be rough for allowed. It's going to be rough. I think Fnatic will struggle on Haven and Ascent. What is what map am I missing? That's not in there. So they'll ban Fracture. Loud will ban Fracture. Fnatic will ban Pearl. Bind is the one I'm missing. I think Fnatic is favored a little bit on Bind. Oy. I think Fnatic beats Loud 2-1. to one. It's a super fucking close series. And it could easily go Loud's way. Don't feel great about that. Obviously. It's not supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to make you feel squeamish that you're going to get everything wrong and you're going to yeah. be wrong forever. But that's, yeah. that's how it's why we do things. Yeah. Um, I'm taking Fnatic over loud. I, okay. I'm going, I'm going with my heart. I got to do it. Got to do it for all of our Americans out there. Pick an EG over PRX to get to the grand finals and for them to win the world championship. Um, though I will say I did just learn that demon one was born in Russia um the other day me and me and demon one were talking uh, today for a little bit um so i will say i'm not surprised that another <laughs> north american team is being carried by a european import um you just kind of got to expect it at this so point dumb. if you're a north american esports fan and you just kind of got to expect it but i am picking eg to win the whole thing they're in a good spot dude they're in a really good spot right now to do it but against paper x i don't know man I think something is finally like heating up into this tournament. And I think we're now in the part of the tournament where they're fucking free rolling rod. They're in the upper finals. They're guaranteed top three. Even if they lose, it doesn't matter. They still get another chance. Right. Yep, and, sure. and if they win one more then they're in the finals, which is exactly where they would be if they lost. I think paper Rex is the type of team where if they have no pressure like this, which I think this is about as low pressure of a game as possible for a team like Paper X. I think these star players on this team are just about to fucking go ham. Like, I think Jing has had a quiet tournament. He's about to go crazy. Forsaken has been an animal. Like, I think yeah, he's for been very underrated dude, so far, I think. So underrated. I don't know if his stats are still up there. No, okay, so I think he fell behind something after that last series. But before that, he was actually ahead of them. He was the number one statistically on the team playing like Killjoy Sky. And he's now played like Harbor, Killjoy Sky. What else has he played? Har uh, Astra. Yeah, he plays Astra on Lotus. Like, he is flexing all over the place. And I Paper X still hasn't shown their bind which I actually think is quite good. Their bind is like the Harbor Reina comp, which yeah, if they are still running that, of course, like they've gotten here without showing a lot. EG, same thing for them. Like they haven't shown some stuff either. I, I'll say what I keep saying, like on the desk, like the pace of Paper X, you can't be ready for that until you're in the server. And by that time, it's too late. I think the players are all in like perfect form. And they're, the perfect form team is the team that wins. I think EG is right there with them. Uh, but I think Paper X is just, they're on another level right now. They they look crazy when I watch them individually. I'm going to side with Paper X here. I think there's edges in the map pool for EG, like Fracture, like I said. I think Potter could definitely anti-shot the shit out of their Pearl. Um, that's honestly like, I think on Haven, I'm favoring the uh, PRX. I think on Split, I might favor Paper X. I'm not going to lie. Even though I think it's a good map for EG, I think uh, if they're running that Astra comp with Demon 1, I think I'm siding PRX there. Lotus will be interesting. I think that's a toss-up. Probably going PRX's way, though. Bind, also pretty interesting. I'd probably go Paper X. I'm hearing 
PRX a lot of times. That's what I'm hearing yeah. the words paper Rex a lot of times. I feel no. like uh, I can deduce you are picking PRX to win the world championship. Yeah, I mean, that's what I had in my pick em, and I think I'm going to stay with it. I think. All right. You yeah. always stick with your pick em, Sean. Of course. Always stick with your pick ems. Never, never turn it's your back on your pick ems. It's the only thing that's been correct. I mean, we'll, we'll see you on the desk this weekend. You'll get to say you were right or ig- ignore it completely and disregard you being wrong. That's what you, you're supposed to do, by yeah, the way. Of course. When you make when you make hot takes, Sean. If you're right, never let anyone forget <laughs> that you were right. Always tell everyone how you were ahead of them in terms of predicting what you predicted. And if you were wrong, never mention it again. Never. You just have to forget about it. It won't. It's nothing. We'll facts. Talk about it. Actual facts. You know the strat. You know it. <laughs> <laughs>